Hi all, I'm Sonia and you're watching my channel Sonia Psychology Classes. Uh, in last class, we had studied the placebo effect. So in case you have not watched, you can just type in Sonia Psychology Classes placebo effect. I'm sure you'll be able to find it or just subscribe to my channel. You'll find all the lessons there. Anyways, in this class, we are going to start with a new topic that is single blind study and double blind study. So let's get started. Uh, in a lot of research work and in studies, uh, researchers do single blind study, double blind study, even triple blind study. So we'll be covering all the three. Uh, basically, single blind study is used in a lot many studies. It can be any in any field at all. Uh, but double blind and uh, triple blind study is majorly used for medical research. So what exactly is single blind study? Single blind study means when a researcher is doing the study, is conducting a research, in that there are various conditions. We have already studied about conditions, independent variable control group, experimental group and all that in our previous classes. So just in case you don't know about it, you can go back and you know just brief yourself about it. So in the research, the researcher can, uh, you know, has different conditions. Let's say we have two conditions, experimental condition and control condition. Now in that, there are a few participants in the experimental group and the other few participants are in the uh, control group. So this is an independent measure design. In one of the groups, now the person, the participant does not know that they are in which group whether they are in the experimental group or whether they are in the control group. So basically the participants in single blind study are blind about the fact they are not aware that they are in which group or they are under which conditions. Now what is the purpose of conducting the single uh, blind study? Why we don't want the participants to know that they are in which condition it the very simple answer of this is the social desirability to uh, control the demand characteristics hence to control the social de desirability demand characteristics we already uh, you know uh, learned about it it means to get hint of the study what the study is about and social desirability is what when you are, you tend to behave in a manner that is more socially accepted. You tend to sometimes fake your behavior. You tend to pretend so that you alter your behavior, which is not really true because you want to be more socially accepted. Okay. So in this case, in single blind study, the participants are the blind ones means they are not aware, not literally blind. They're not aware of the fact that they are in which condition. So why is it done? It, it is done because we don't want the researcher doesn't want the participant to know that they are in which condition, because if the participant gets to know that they're in which condition, they might alter their behavior. I'll give you an example of this. Okay, let's take an example of single blind study. Let's say I have, uh, I'm a researcher, for example, and I have two groups. One is experimental group and one is con control group. In experimental group, the participants get a flu uh, vaccine. And in control group, they do not get a flu vaccine. They uh, get some saline water or something like that. Now, let's say the participants are aware of the fact now this experimental group knows that they have know that they have been given a vaccine flu vaccine and the ex, uh, control group they know that they have been given just the saline water and not the flu vaccine so if the participant gets to know they might alter the behavior let's say this control group who knows that they have been given saline water and not the real drug they might alter the behavior in a way they are they get scared that you know what if uh, we have not been given the vaccine and what if something happens to me so they start washing their hands regularly taking all the precautionary measures so these kind of when they alter their behavior from their usual behavior this can lead to, you know this can affect my the results of my study how in natural case if now if the participants if the participants did not know that they are in the control group they would have acted or behaved in a very natural manner but now since they have altered their behavior they were aware that they were in control group they were not given the vaccine the sickness rate between both these groups narrows down so i will never get to know whether the drug whether the vaccine actually affected the person's health or did not so this narrowing of the gap is actually is becoming an extraneous variable and it is hampering with my, uh, you know, uh, uh, hampering the results of my study. 
Now, in the same case, if I do the single blind study, now my participants do not know. They are blind to the fact they don't know whether they are in the experimental group or they are in the control group. So, when they are not aware of the fact, they are likely to behave in their natural manner, in their natural behavior. They will not pretend, they will not fake. So, this is going to bring in the true results for my study. So, what is double blind study? Double blind study means that uh, not just the participants but also the researcher does not have any idea uh, or both are not aware that which participant is in which condition either experimental or control condition. So, we'll, let's do an example for this. Let's say I am a researcher and I want to do a study on uh, the effect of cognitive behavioral therapy CBT on the participant. So, this is a therapy where you know you talk and you um, talk to the uh, participant in a certain manner there are certain techniques and strategies used in this therapy okay so it's a talking therapy so anyways uh, so the experimental group I as a researcher I'm giving them CBT and in the second one in the second group control group it's not CBT given it's just a friendly talk being given to them now in this case what happens is as a researcher if I know that which participant is in which study then it might lead to researcher biasness. I might alter my behavior. I might treat that particular participant in a certain way because I know that, you know, this participant is for CBT or this participant is in the control group. So my behavior as a researcher can also get altered, which can also lead to hampering the results of my study. So in double blind study, both the participants as well as the person the researcher who is there they do not know what you know which participant is for which condition uh, or uh, you can take a uh, example of medical medicine example as well where you know the uh, real uh, drug is given to the experimental group and the fake a dummy pill is given to the control group participant now neither the participant knows whether they have been given a dummy pill or the real pill nor the person uh, nor the researcher knows that you know they are giving which pill to which one okay now this is again just to control the researcher biasness now importance of blinding why do we need to do a blind study the very first thing is to increase the validity of the study any study is a good study by a researcher if the validity and the reliability are good are high so how can we make it a highly valid study uh, a highly valid study can only be taken place when the there is a true cause and effect relationship when we know that it is the effect of iv on the dv and there are no other extraneous variables that are you know impacting the dv if there are other extraneous variables that are impacting dv that means that this is this cause and effect of iv and dv is not true this cause and effect relationship is not true so our the validity of our study goes down which is not a good thing so to make it higher in validity there are a few things one is uh, how it happens the first is taking care of the demand characteristics the participants don't know that they are in which study single blind study they don't get a hint of it so hence they take care of their social desirability these are a few terminologies you can note it down demand characteristics are low social desirability is low so social desirability i had already explained it to you when they are not aware of the facts when they don't have the aim of the study they don't know they've been in which condition they don't show social desirable behavior they act very naturally in their natural behavior they come out so when they're naturally behaving it you know it is actually showing me the effect of iv on the dv and there are no social desirable behaviors that is an extraneous variable and then the third is researcher biasness. Researcher biasness as in I can be biased while, you know, uh, while dealing with my participants that I know this is an experimental, this is for control groups. So I start dealing or perceiving them in a very different manner. So in, to, in order to control that researcher biasness, even the, for the data analyst, uh, you know, uh, while analyzing the data, even their biasness to be controlled, double and triple blind studies are used so it is all done to increase the validity of the study to make it more valid and more the the whatever the results come in are highly uh, true to itself 
our last point is inability to blind now sometimes uh, every time for every kind of study uh, having a single or double blind study is not uh, you know is is not possible so we cannot take care of these extraneous variables sometimes like for example i give an example of medicine about the pill drug so there if you give a you know a real drug or a fake drug they might not get to know so there single or double blind study even triple blind study is quite possible but let's say i give an example of cbt in most likely in that case a uh, blindness is not possible because the part is the researcher if i am the researcher there double blind study is not possible because i if i am giving the cbt obviously i would know that the, to this group i am giving cbt the therapy talking therapy and to this control group i am giving different kind of talking therapy i am myself conducting the research so obviously it makes it like quite obvious that i would know that what kind of treatment or what kind of therapy i am giving to the participant it is coming from me so in that case double blind study is not possible in so in that many cases a uh, single or double blind uh, so these are uh, i mean design is not possible but uh, we can take you know different measures or other measures to reduce the extraneous variables and increase the validity of the study so here we are done with the lesson of single and double and triple blind study i hope you enjoyed and you understood it really well um please do write in the comments below if you have any questions any queries anything that you have not understood i would upload another video with more examples uh, so that you understand better and please uh, subscribe to my channel so that you know that what all new topics are coming on or you can also follow the old uh, lessons if you want to and keep watching my next video my next lesson is going to be on self reports where we'll be talking about the questionnaires um interviews observations uh, and so on so keep watching till then bye bye